Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. And today we're actually going to be revisiting the Overgrown Snapvine, one of my personal favorite cards from the Bilgewater collection and one of the first decks I really experimented with and found great success with. But you know, it's good. Today we're gonna revisit it. I did receive a comment which I'm gonna feature now. It's from Dezello. He gave me some great ideas and some great feedback, knowledge, tips, or some additions that could give the deck a bit of a boost. So I hope you don't mind me sharing your comment, Dezello, but I do appreciate you sending that through. You know, you gave me a lot of like food for thought, ideas, and ways I can improve a deck. And I think it's important to revisit decks that you may have found success with in the past, especially to keep them relevant as the metagame adjusts and shifts continuously especially since uh, rune terror is going to be a game that does have constant patches it's always good to make sure you are relevant and taking your deck the appropriate way so now i guess we'll start to talk about like where the deck's gone in terms of direction now it's still going to be pretty much focused on the snap vine that's not going to change we're going to have three copies of snap vine in the deck but now our early game is going to look a lot different i've stepped away from hapless aristocrat that was one of the big uh, tips from dezello and i think i do agree with him there I've made a lot of adjustments kind of similar to some of these ideas that we had. I've also made some little adjustments of my own. So now we're not as focused on the spiders. We're not as focused on the, um, like getting immense crazy value from Snapvine, but we're more focused on the early game and having some very productive plays outside of just dropping Aristocrat and Crawling Sensation. So for that sense, we are going to go visit the Curse Keeper, Undying, Chronicle of Ruin package. Um, these cards can just generally give you a huge boost to the early game and you'll find tremendous value from them. And I think it's definitely a good idea to be like somewhat relevant in the early game. So we're still gonna run like Elise and we're still gonna run like Caretakers and stuff. I've gotten rid of the Skidra. I'm going full Caretaker, has a lot more synergy with the Undying and I've tried to make it more uh, very synergistic but without sacrificing our game plan too much try to give it as much synergy as possible so every card can combo together and do something good so in that sense i'm actually going to be running the oblivious islander now this card can it, it can de definitely pop off it can definitely pop off so we pretty much want to use this on snapvine to reduce the cost of it immediately so we can get it to the board faster so i've tried to make this deck a lot more faster with the snap vine itself so i can get it down to the field because that's when things start to pop hence why i've gotten rid of the iceborne legacy so we can try and get to it faster okay so islander like we're pretty much not usually going to play this on turn one i would like to hit this on the snap vine and in terms of like our early game plays like turn two is going to be where we want to drop something into the field so curse keeper we have the butcher as well to go alongside it if we need or we have the ruin but the feature featuring of undying kind of gives oblivious islander a little bit more value so it has another target outside of um snap vine itself which i think kind of gives it just a little bit more synergy in this deck and a little bit more utility so islander is going to fit in good there's always a chance that i could even consider hitting a caretaker in the early game to try and affect the board more immediately but yeah, as I said, that's a target. I won't talk too much about that. We're still going to have uh, Elise. I think Elise is just going to provide the spider. It's going to provide the early game. So I don't think this this might change if we get some other tools in the future or if Snapvine is still relevant or maybe even within this card set that I might be missing something. But I still like Elise for now. Getting more tokens kind of really helps with this deck. I uh, Glimpse Beyond, we're bumping that up to three now. Vile Feast, we're bumping that up to three. I think now they're running Undying. Glimpse Beyond finds a lot more value since we're running cards like uh, Curse Keeper, Butcher, uh, you know, Vile Feast. Vile Feast kind of becomes more relevant for being able to deal with the early game. Uh, Caretaker bumped us up to three. Synergizer's Undying. Chronicle of Ruin. We're running this pretty much for hitting the uh, Undying. Sometimes hit the Curse Keeper. These cards are really great for it. Uh, we're still rocking like the Broad Awakening. I've bumped up two Grass with Undying. Uh, the Within Whale we just discussed. I'm running a single copy of Neverglade Collector. This card's low-key pretty interesting. It fits pretty well into a more heavily based token deck, but having a single copy of it can sometimes allow you to get some HP back as the game progresses. So in that sense, I've cut like the Ruination and uh, some of the top-end cards just to focus on the early game. And I guess the one final card we will talk about very quickly is going to be Maokai. And I'm running Maokai because... I think Maokai just fits into any deck that runs, obviously, Shadow Isles heavily into it. But since we are running so many minions and so many ways of activating and summoning minions, that Maokai kind of just fits in. 
and it is another wing condition outside of snapbinds so i don't mind maokai it does have some sort of synergy it is a lower tempo play but in terms of like our tempo it's a more of a combo tempo like we want to be hitting curse keeper alongside ruin you know undying alongside like the caretakers and getting as much value from these cards as possible but for the opportunity that we are having a nice curve we can sometimes just drop maokai as well and start to receive value uh from the saplings tossing cards isn't too scary if we toss the snap vines that is going to suck so we'll have to wait and see just how this works but for now it's a card i'm willing to test I think you'd be surprised how fast you actually level this up or mostly in this it's just going to be for the saplings and just finding more targets that could even like come with the snap vine because maokai is not going to be affected by the snap vine itself but the saplings will be so let's say for example you have a maokai in the field you play a snapling uh snap vine what's going to happen is uh the snap vine is going to come down maokai is going to summon a uh, sapling and it's going to turn into a a snap vine it's also going to die which is going to level up maokai so i like it this might be a one-off but we won't drag this on too much let's go play some games guys i really hope this works out okay so we're reversing into a spiders i think i'm pretty comfortable understanding what cards he will have so i won't be bringing up anything on the side here but do i have time to keep snap by in the opening hand this is the matchup. I, usually we draw into Snapvine, but the other thing is though, is that if we start to find Oblivious Islander, we can start to ping it early and get it onto the board. So in that sense, maybe I keep the Butcher. Hope that we find the Curse Keeper to do something productive early. There's the Islander. So that's actually a very bonkers opening hand. This is a very ideal hand and where I'd hope to be. Now... Where are you? Endure spiders. How how many how many uh ruinations that have inventions? So that's one card that can really bum us out. We're not gonna take any blocks at all. You open an attack there, so if you had a lease in hand, he chose not to play it. Which I'm not too sure about. That's kinda strange. I feel as if we should be developing this turn. He could have uh brought awakening. That might be a bit of an outplay. What was that? What's that? Let's see what's out there. If he was to play Broad Awakening, he gets really good trades on my guys. He can't block the Elise, so it's such an obvious play that he wants to make. But the only value I lose is the Butcher value. I think it's going to be on dying. I think we're going to develop into the Broad Awakening, to be honest. If that is his play, that's all his mana. Okay. Let's play the Butcher, and we'll just try and go aggressive now. I'd be, I'd be shocked not to see a Broad Awakening now. It gets pretty good trades. Into the Butcher. He may be sitting on a Withering Whale. Grasp of the Undying. All these cards... It's okay. We've got the reduction on Snap Vine, which is great. So there was a Broad Awakening. So now all of a sudden, our trades don't look as good. But I still feel as if we should trade within everything. Even if we lose the Butcher. I just don't want him to kind of uh, play Elise against me. Which he may choose to... Yeah, tank three. This makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's not going to tank that much. Yeah, that makes a lot... <laughs> I was going to say that makes more sense. So since we haven't got as much spiders, leveling up Elise is kind of not going to happen. I guess maybe he was worried about Withering Whale and that's why he may have chose not to play around it. A Glimpse Beyond here is really nice because he's most likely going to spend up most of his mana. On turn 4, he, like, he wants to play Elise, so, which he didn't draw. So if I was to Glimpse here, I don't think he can do anything about it. I wonder if it's more productive getting Elise into the, uh, Glimpsing now. Like, how does he actually deal with it? He does not deal with it. And I think being able to guarantee glimpse draws is kind of important. He hasn't got mana for grasp, so this should connect most of the time. Promoting the next, um... The next Undying could be helpful. But for now, we're chilling. We find the Oblivious Islander. I want to hit down Snapbine. 
Okay. So young. I guess we'll play the Islander. Sure is dark, eh? So now we have Snapbind at five mana, but I don't know if I'm going to play it immediately just yet. We're probably just going to chill for now. Chill one more turn. So in that case, we're going to play... We're going to open attack here. Okay, so he has another Broad Awakening. That could be a bit of a bummer. These Undyings will help us to play around a Ruination Nation too. Undying finds a bit more value against these control decks that want to uh, interact with the board. So I guess a Dua Spider is like... I guess it's hard. A little bit hard. Because we have to figure out a way how to beat him down. And how to play around uh, Dua itself. So it's really important that we don't take too much damage. It's a Vile Feast. Onto the Elise. He may be considering um, playing Elise here. It looks like he's setting up for Astrocity. I can play my Snapvine and ignore these spiders on the board, but Withering Whale here honestly is really strong. But he may be just looking to play uh, They Who Endure on Curve. So I don't think I can really afford to hurt, like for him to have Endure right now. So I guess it's just Withering Whale. Yeah, we want to do it this turn. I want to do it this turn. Hopefully no Endure. There could be an argument to um, not do it now. Because if he does have Endure, it comes down and like, I could have brought myself a, a turn by him not having it. But let's just hope that he hasn't got it. Okay, he does have it. It is what it is. So what I can do here is save myself some damage by blocking with the snap vine. We must all make sacrifices. And I do get another snap vine, which is kind of great. Okay, so we can't ruinate me right now. So I kind of have to kill him this turn. And I do see opportunities and ways to kill him. We're going to play the Curse Keeper. It's going to give us two Snap Vines. Grasp of the Undying can get some work done for him here. Unfortunate. Okay, so he's going to heal. Yeah, I st still think we have to play on dying. And just swing. We're just swinging. You won't suffer long. I think I may have like really not planned out this turn very much, but I'm expecting him to kill off some minions. At least, um, They Who Endure is now in range. But the problem is he always gets prio on the open attack. So I gotta think about how I can play around his atrocity. And this is gonna be quite pretty cool, because we're gonna get our Undyings back, which will just die and bring back more snap binds. So now what he does here is he open attacks. This might look I smell a fight. Okay, what does that do? What does that change? It means he can't do anything about this. This is the play, right? He may not have had an atrocity in hand, which means that we might he might be alive. So we're blocking, we are blocking these both. We might have found a cheeky lethal here. Obviously that's happening. He hasn't got the atrocity value. 
We have the Chronicler value. So what's better to hit here? I think it makes more sense to hit Elise. No, it makes more sense to hit Chronicle. Uh, Undying, sorry. And we're going to get an Undying back, which is very great. Although, like, now our Undying is not actually as strong. <laughs> but I don't know how he actually deals with this. So we don't swing with Elise. We do swing with Elise anyway. So hopefully this is just enough. Um, he needs like some weird answers here. I think he needs like double grasp with the undying. Double atrocity. There's not enough mana there. So double grasp. Yes. Two. Keeps him alive at one. Wait, why is he surrendering? Why did he surrender? He was alive at one. I don't have like the answers in hand. He may have drew into atrocity. Fizz Vi and Twisted Fate. I am versing somebody who likes to have a little bit of fun. So Vile Feast doesn't actually find as much value if he has Fizz in the opener. Oh, pardon me. So is this like a 1 Vi, 3 Fizz, 2 TF kind of deck? It might be, or even a 1 Fizz. They have ways of dealing with Broad Awakening. I think cards like Undying and Curse Keeper just find a bit more value. Because we're never dealing with Fizz, so we have to beat him down quick. Undying might be too slow. I'm just gonna hope that he doesn't have fists in the opener. It's like a literally a less than it's a 50% chance if he has three copies. And he never plays it on turn one. But against Shadow Isles, there's no answers on turn one. I know what lurks. At least provides us more than Curse Keeper, but it's a target for Thermo Beam. Which I'm not sure if a Fizz by Twisted Fate deck would be running Thermo Beam. We play in build rules. We're playing build rules. Hush now. So hopefully yeah, the fleeting card he finds is something quite expensive. That would be kind of, you know, Why bonus you? for us. Taking the box. So young. So we have to tread carefully with our broad awakening because this is a card that gets dealt with quite easily by uh, Twisted Fate. The card is low key very powerful against spiders. So. Maybe Curse Keeper? Maybe Vile Feast? This turn is important. This turn is important. Play Curse Keeper. It could be a target for um, Make It Rain. It could make things a little bit more awkward for him. Because I'm probably going to Vile Feast the Petty Officer. Pretty obvious tray attack. So Make It Rain will deal two to everything. A tribute to the Spider God. Okay, make it rain. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to see make it rain, right? Oh, ho, ho, he hit a Vi from the fleeting. That is so good for us. So what do we get punished by? Not a lot if I just promote the undying here. So I'm going to promote the undying. Twist of Fate's not that powerful here. It tends to hit at least, but uh, I think that's okay for now. I think the ability to play around make it rain is kind of a lot more relevant. I actually won't swing with the Curse Keeper. I don't think I value the one attack enough for it to possibly be, possibly be blocked. But that might be playing too slow. I just see a scenario where he blocks with the 1-1 one, one and then plays like... Like a Make It Rain. So he's dealing three. How do we feel about that? We feel like it's okay. At least got us a bit of value. 
We have another Elise in hand. Never lost a fair so what does it do here? It goes for the cycle. Now our Broad Awakening gets a little bit better, so we might consider playing that next turn. I mean, there's there's a few answers from him. Maybe Undying Strictly a little bit better. Cool, he's not beating us down, and he hasn't found Fizz. I guess we block with the Spider. I'll avoid taking two if I can. So we'll go for the Broad Awakening here. I realize there's a bit more value from Undying than I might have expected. Because when it dies at the end of the turn and revives, it kind of gives us weird opportunities here and there where coming back into our seven mana turn, whatever scenario that is, we could have uh, the snap bind ready to go for when uh, Undying revives. I think Vile Feast is also a good activator for snap bind when they go to play a spell against it. I need to tread just a little bit carefully for the timing of the snapbine. It is at 7 mana too, which makes it a little bit more awkward to get going early. So slow playing here is not the worst. It's not the best either, but we get punished by Vi. But only a little bit punished. We'll play the Undying, because he wants to play cards like uh, make it rain and stuff. Karina. That just gave me a lot of information about what he could be running. So why is he running, uh, like, Fizz? This is like one of those turns where the, man the amount of mana he has... Maybe I should have grasped the Undying, the, uh... Hmm. That's okay. Should I be swinging with the Curse Keeper? I probably should have uh, killed the TF before I leveled up. But it's fine. That's what we've had to deal with. Maybe Grasp was just strictly better there. I swung with the Curse Keeper last because I think there's a scenario where it dies. Unfortunately, they all seem to hit our spiders. What are the chances of that? That's really unlucky, I feel. It is what it is. Do we want to float one mana? Play Elise? Don't think we'll play Elise. TF is leveling. We could have played around this by using our grasp. We'll see how much we get punished by the TF level. Fire comes down. Nothing slight about these hands. Soak it in. Is it now snap buying time? Or do I wait till after he attacks? I think I wait till after he attacks. No. Nah, I gotta hope to draw into another snap bind. I'll see if he reacts here. What he should do is attack now, and drag in the snap vine, so that when I go to Vile Feast, he can uh, he can deal with the snap vine, right? He's probably trying to work out now if the snap vine. We got a snap vine. We lose a snap vine though.
It's a bit unfortunate. But we have more snap vines. <gasps> oh, dude. The, the fucking red card, dude. Oh, dude, he just got outplayed. That's crazy. That's super crazy. Oh, did I get the value from the Chrono Club now? Boy. Things just turned ugly for him because his TF pulled a red card. Could he have actually played around that? And he could have. I don't think it's random, the cards, right? Because once TF has leveled, it plays the cards in order. So, we're going to take this time to grasp. How does he protect the Vi? And what's more important, the Vi or TF? I think getting rid of the Vi is slightly more threatening. Perhaps not. Perhaps the TF is more of a threat. If he wants to spam a spell right now, he's actually gonna kill the Undying. This is all of our mana. Sure. Who says I don't share? Excuse me. So I feel pretty comfortable swinging with two. Why are you here? No. No, no, no. That's a vile feast target now. So we have Undyings that are returning back to us. Two copies. So this... Oh no. That was a big fucking misplay. Oh, I shouldn't have swung with two. <sighs> That's okay. At least our Undyings find some value. Oh, look at that. See if he slow plays here. I need to put up some blockers. So I'm going to play Snap Vine here because uh, I can get the Vile Feast value from it possibly. Sure. Success. Vulnerable. Mm, that actually makes things a little bit tricky now. Unfortunately, I think I just have to Vile Feast here. Even though Snap Vines are going to go down. We at least have a chance to deal with the Vi. I don't think it's going... The level up, I'm not sure what goes first. He's not swinging with a Vi, maybe. That could be interesting. I would have to assume that he has to drag the snap vine up with Vi. Oh, he's just gonna play this out. Very strange. Nothing slight about these hands. Play Elise. Then we swing with um Is this a spooky card? We can't swing with Elise though, so that may have been a mistake. So I don't want to give his Vi a free level up. Because at the moment, it can't level up appropriately from striking without some sort of buff. Blue 
Sure. I'm not sure if I'm just supposed to swing Hail Mary with everything. I get via level up if I swing with Elise. I guess we just do this. I'm not sure if it's correct or if I'm supposed to swing with everything. But let's just let's just see what happens. And the way he pinged these with the static shock, uh, static sh is kind of relevant. Playing a red card. Does he have another way of dealing one damage to certain things? This game's really close, but we made that seriously big misplay earlier though. We were able to deal with it though, so it might not be considered a terrible misplay because we had the elusive uh, cat that was on the one HP. But probably not as worth. We'll see. Gold card's gonna stun the toughest units. Sure. Dead in their tracks. The Undying's died, so we're gonna get back another snap vine. How can I help? The refilling of mana allows him to get Thermo Beam. We've already seen two. There's no third. Crazy value from the Undying. Super bad top deck though. Oh no, it's the fish. Yep, yep, yep. So that's a lot of elusive stuff going to my face. I think what may have been the bigger misplay in this game is that I actually didn't grasp that TF prior to it leveling. I don't see any reason not to play the Islander. I've got nothing to really hide. Fizz gets elusive, that's eight. We're on three. He's probably running like get excited. He may just have the direct damage. Uh, Vi can challenge Elise, which is a free level up. There's nothing that I'm hiding anymore. So this swing comes into Elise. Everything else swings. He has to give Fizz elusive. And then I've got to kill him the next turn. Does this deal to end the enemy nexus? Okay, the game's over. I'm a people person. GG. A little bit frustrating of a game. I think that misplay may have cost us, but I think the bigger one was probably uh, leaving Ezreal alive. Really disappointed about that game, but we'll have to review that and really think about what needs to be done. Maybe our draws weren't as effective this game, but we did find some tools and we had the actions required. I have not found Caretakers once. This is a card that we are running that becomes relevant for a lot of reasons, but we weren't able to find it. I have three copies, that's insane. I haven't found Maokai, but I'm not sure how relevant Maokai is going to be. It's kind of funny, our draws looked identical. We didn't hit Maokai Caretaker once or we're doing whale i have not seen these cards at all <laughs> anyway guys thanks for tuning in um i did like the feel for this deck so far i think it's going to need a little bit more tweaking i'm not sure if the cards need to change or if they need to get a bigger sample size but we'll keep at it once again thank you uh Dizello, for leaving your comment with some of your feedback i hope maybe if you're watching this one this kind of gives you a little bit of a uh, idea of what the deck how it could look I think the undying was actually amazing I don't think we we're able to push like I think this may be a two of though 
But like, unless we had a lot more, like a little bit more support for making this undying fit in a little bit better, like more reasons to have, like I, if I find three of these, I feel like I'm going to be disappointed. If I draw into one, that's like where it's most valuable. If you draw into two, sometimes it's great. I think drawing into three might hurt us. Like if I was to take it out, for example, I would probably consider more cycle, which uh, we don't have in Shadow Wilds though. But for now, Undying could be a three of. And that's the deck, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a like. That'd be super appreciated. Thank you. Helps boost the performance of the video. And as I've said before, gives me ideas of what to do in the future. Thank you, guys.